Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Olympus TG2. It was introduced in early 2013 and here in late 2016 they're up to the TG4. I borrowed this camera um, looking for a replacement for my sadly departed uh, Nikon AW100. The reviews of its successors uh, haven't been great. So I'm thinking about maybe another uh, brand of waterproof, tough camera. This has a uh, 12 megapixel, 1 over 2.3 inches. I haven't calculated what that is in millimeters. It's a CMOS sensor. It does sensor shift, image stabilization. A really nice feature of this compared to other uh, tough point and shoots. Uh, it has an f2.0 lens at its widest of 25 millimeters. That's 35 millimeter equivalent. 4.9 at maximum zoom, 100 millimeters. And uh, the shutter goes from 4 seconds to 1 2,000th of a second. It's tough features. It's waterproof to 15 meters, um, somewhere around 50 feet. Uh, shock proof as in dropping it to 2.1 meters, so a little over six feet. Uh, it's freeze proof to minus 10 centigrade. Uh, it's about 14 degrees Fahrenheit. And crush proof, the pressure um, that it'll take, uh, 100 kilograms for about 220 pounds. Has a uh, 600K three inch OLED display. There's no other viewfinder. There's no shoes, so it really can't be fitted with a small electronic. Other features, uh, it does have pretty nice GPS. It's something I don't use a lot, except sometimes when I'm in the mountains. Continuous shooting uh, at full resolution, it'll do five frames per second. Something I haven't played with too much is a tap control. You can set it to where, you know, you just kind of knock it on something, it'll bring up the menu good for when you're wearing gloves or something like that. The movies from this are pretty nice. The last couple of uh, camera videos I've done a shot with this. Does 1080p at 30 frames per second. Has stereo audio. Uh, it's a much, much reduced resolution, um, but this will do uh, 240 frames per second or 120. The 240 frames per second is kind of nice, like with the Nikon. I use it to get a ballpark timing on an old camera shutter. Um, it doesn't have, the Nikon had a clip-on filter ring. This one, it replaces this bezel. It's an optional purchase. Uh, after that, it'll take uh, any 40.5 millimeter filters. And there are also a couple of pretty pricey, but there's a tele adapter and a wide adapter made by Olympus for this camera. Uh, it has an LED, which is nice for macro work, and it uses, if you're shooting in the dark, to get a focus lock. Uh, the flash is not real strong, 7.9 meters, but that's if you've uh, got the ISO jacked up to 1600. Um, this will do uh, radio control of specific Olympus or Panasonic flashes. So you do get some pretty nice uh, off-the-body flash control. Makes up a bit for the weak flash. It has some nice modes. Um, there's I Auto where it selects the uh, best scene mode. And then Super Macro mode. Uh, it's good down to a centimeter. Let's see if I can spin this guy the right way. Uh, the scene mode. There's a good set of types of scenes, like four different underwater scenes, beach, backlit, fireworks, you know, night portrait, the usual suite of uh, scene modes. One thing that's a little unusual, it has an aper aperture priority mode with this dial set to A, but it's not actually stopping down the diaphragm, it's uh, swapping in neutral density filters. You get three selections uh, with the lens set wide and a different three uh, with it uh, zoomed all of the way. 
then there's this magic mode it's a selection of filters some of them are really good some of them are just kind of me a couple that I've used there's one called dramatic there's a pinhole one that I can't remember what it's called but it kind of does squares of the picture bizarre mirror image mode played with that so there's two or three of those that are good some of them that aren't great then there's c1 and c2 that's for if you're in programmed auto exposure and you set white balance or something like that you can save those settings under those dial selectors most of the time I've been shooting with this and programmed auto exposure you get a little more control you can do plus or minus two steps of exposure compensation you can change your white balance you can force the ISO and I don't remember the range I believe it's about a hundred to thirty two hundred I'll look it up and put it in the text below and you can change the the resolution the aspect ratio and the self timer those last three are also available in the I auto modes so like most point-and-shoots the sensor can be a little bit noisy and particularly at high ISOs you know and it tries to do some smoothing so like the Pentax W90 that I used to have it can look a little mushy but thankfully with the f2 lens you know you can do optical brightness and it won't have to push the ISO speeds up in low light so it's a it's a decent balance for that a couple of things that are a little bit of downsides the doors the waterproof doors they have the two sliders Nikon has actually changed to this on this side you get the proprietary USB connector and then a small HDMI and something that drives me a little bit crazy access to the battery and the SD card are on the bottom so if you're on a tripod and you need to swap out cards or you know swap out battery or, well you're just stuck you gotta shut it down take it off of the uh, tripod not a huge thing most of the pluses of this camera outweigh it I'm thinking about getting the new one the TG4 um, it will shoot raw which is a real benefit especially when you're dealing with some of the sensor noise you can keep it from doing the smoothing um, and mushing out something where you want detail something this one doesn't do and I don't know if the TG4 does that the Nikon did it would show movie crop lines on the sensor when it was in photo mode so that like when I was doing these videos I could get things set properly before I switch to movie mode this one it doesn't matter what this dial selector is at you just hit the red button the dedicated button is nice but it's nice to get a preview of what the movies gonna look like um, and the charger for this normally it charges in the body and the external charger is another add-on cost so Olympus charges you for a couple of things that came with the Nikon but the uh, the newer Nikons have been a lot of reports of the body's flooding I don't dive but you know it's nice to be able to get it wet at the beach go snorkeling you know something like that so a quick rundown of the rest of the controls it's got a standard uh, tele wide rocker here on off switch the shutter button the movie button the selector dial it's got its dedicated uh, playback button and a four-way rocker here with an okay in it in normal shooting modes this will control the flash or you can pull up the menu in programmed auto exposure um, so that you can you know monkey with the white balance and things like that and menu there are several screens of setup menus I have no idea if you'll be able to shoot uh, to see this here's some of the settings and programmed auto exposure and then menu you get all of the you know 
format your SD card, set your movie modes, set your aspect ratio. There are several screens of that. One thing that's really nice is as you step through the menu items, at the bottom it gives you a quick description of them. So that's a really nice feature. So the more I've used this, the more I like it. I was glad I was able to borrow it. So who knows, maybe in a bit I'll be reviewing the TG2, or TG4 rather. So I'll see you then.